please allow me to tell you about the one regret I've had in my TV career. It concerns the one day I faced Mark Cuban on live TV, a day I have tried again and again to rectify. So now that Mark Cuban has made a mess, a mess I predicted by trading for Kyrie Irving and trying to pair him with Luca, I said it wouldn't work. It has not worked. I said from the start, they will not fit together. And together, they took the Mavericks from the four seed when Kyrie walked in the door to the 11 out of the playoffs seed that they currently sit in. Now that all that has happened, I would like nothing better than to face Mark Cuban on live TV once more. But now came the morning after LeBron's first ring. Live from Miami, a show that I hoped would be epic. And would you believe I was not told until our production meeting that morning, maybe two or so hours before the live show, that a guest had been booked without my knowledge. Mark Cuban had been booked. I was not happy. First take, as you probably know, is only two hours compared to the two and a half for Undisputed. We would need every minute available during a two hour first take to cover all the LeBron angles. This was before I had what I guess you would call quote unquote executive producer status on first take, final say on guests. We're still relatively new in our new format. And I was told the wheels were literally or had been literally set in motion to go pick up Mark Cuban, get him over to our set on time. I don't remember exactly how the conversation with Cuban unfolded. I only remember that I tried to say as little as possible. I tried to not engage with Mark Cuban. The flashpoint came when Cuban tried to explain what a brilliant tactical job the Mavs had done in the 2011 finals, again, the year before this, of defending LeBron James. Of course, I'm rolling my eyes at Cuban, and I did make a point. No, that that wasn't what happened. It it wasn't what the Mavs did. It was what LeBron didn't or couldn't do because, as you recall, the chosen one became the frozen one and melted down the way no superstar ever has in NBA Finals history in three straight games, four, five, and six, all won by Dallas. But I didn't want to argue too hard with Cuban because that was last year. The last thing I wanted to do on that morning was to go deep into rehashing LeBron's collapse versus the Mavericks. The the Mavericks couldn't stop him. LeBron stopped himself when the pressure to close the deal on his first ring just ate him alive. But again, crushing LeBron on that day, on his first ring day, just seemed to me so unfair and so out of bounds and so off point. He had finally won a ring. It was about damn time. The clock was ticking on just two hours of first take. So on the fly, remember all this is live TV. It's all think fast. I'm I'm doing it constantly with Shannon Sharp every single day. Think fast, think fast, think fast. Instincts. Try this. Plunge on that. No, don't. No, don't. Yes. Yes, go. No, no, don't go. So I'm trying to think fast with Mark Cuban. I let him make him his inside the Mavericks strategy point. And I tried to move the conversation along to a quicker close. That is the God's truth of what happened in my brain that day through those moments. I was told after the show by our producers that the Internet was saying Mark Cuban kicked my ass, that Mark Cuban made me look foolish. But the truth was, 
the foolishness was coming from Mark Cuban's mouth. I just wasn't fighting back the way I have every other time in my career except that one. I hope you enjoyed that video. You ready for more? Make sure you click that subscribe button for all the exclusive content from The Skip Bayless Show. And don't forget to check out the full episode of the show wherever you get your podcasts by clicking the link in the description.